Our top focus story on the broadcast is the biggest push to Atmanirbhar Bharat in the sector of military aviation. The Cabinet Committee on Security, headed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, today approved the purchase of 83 Tejas light combat aircraft, 73 fighter jets and 10 trainers. This deal is expected to cost approximately 48,000 crore rupees. It is the biggest deal in domestic defense aviation sector. So it's a huge development, a game changer, as Defense Minister Rajnath Singh put it. The question remains, will HAL be able to deliver on time, ensure quality control, and also ensure that there are no cost overruns? Abhishek Balla gets you our top story tonight. India's biggest Make in India deal in the defense sector, worth nearly 46,000 crore rupees, has just gotten the go-ahead from Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The Indian Air Force has been cleared to order 83 improved Tejas light combat aircraft. This will be a substantially improved variant from the 40 jets earlier ordered by the Air Force. The Tejas Mark 1A variant is an indigenously designed, developed and manufactured state-of-the-art modern 4-plus generation fighter jet. The potent Made in India machine is critical for operational capability and the modernization of the Indian Air Force. These aircraft yet to be manufactured will be equipped with beyond visual range missiles, jammers to make enemy radars redundant and air-to-air -air refueling. They will also be substantially more maintainable on the ground. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh tweeted after the clearance from the Cabinet Committee on Security. This deal will be a game-changer for self-reliance in the Indian defence manufacturing. The LCA Tejas incorporates a large number of new technologies, many of which were never attempted in India. The indigenous content of LCA Tejas is 50% in Mark 1A, which will go up to 60%. The LCA Tejas, designed by the Aeronautical Development Agency or ADA, under the Defence Research and Development Organisation and manufactured by HAL is expected to be the backbone of the Indian Air Force in the future as the mantra is self-reliance by reducing imports. With the decks cleared, the delivery is expected to start within three years of the contract. We have placed our trust in the light combat aircraft and in the next five years we will commence induction of 83 uh, LCA Mark 1As. These 83 jets are in addition to the 40 Mark I jets being delivered to the Indian Air Force. The first Tejas squadron came up in 2016 in Sulur near Coimbatore in Tamil Nadu. The Indian Air Force's squadron strength is down to 30 from a sanctioned strength of 42. Large numbers of LCA Tejas will help stem the decline. And these fighter aircrafts of the fourth generation are to be equipped with state-of-the-art electronic suites, including airborne ISR radar. I am really feeling delighted that it has happened and a major hurdle has been crossed. The decks have been cleared for this procurement. The deal for 83 Tejas jets is not just a big boost for the indigenous manufacturing of defense equipment, but will also help the Indian Air Force fill the critical gaps in its fleet as of now. The message in the security establishment is loud and clear. The future lies within India and the armed forces should not have to depend on foreign manufacturers. With camera person Vinod Abhishek Bhalla in New Delhi, for India Today. That's very important. You have to be Atma Nirbhar when it comes to defense manufacturing. Of course, as of now, 50% components are from overseas, 50% are domestic. The effort is to take the indigenous component to 60% uh, at the end of this cycle. But manufacture this in India. Hope you'll also export this to the world. It's a big dream and a big responsibility on the shoulders of the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Let me quickly bring in India today's Shiv Arur and Abhishek Bhalla. Shiv, Abhishek and I have covered the Tejas development uh, over past decades and this is Indeed, a great day, Shiv. A game changer when it comes to the Indian Air Force in more ways than one when Indian Air Force has put its heart, soul and trust in domestic manufacturing 
and in Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, Shiv. Got of the deal for 73 of the improved version of the LCA Tejas, the Mark 1A, is extremely crucial. It's taken its own time to come, but the fact that it's finally been cleared for that contract uh, is enormously significant. Not only is it because we need these aircraft as quickly as possible, but also because there is a production line that has already been set up, uh, and uh, you know that production line needs to be kept kept warm. It needs to be kept active, uh, you know, so that uh, the expertise that India has built up in uh, developing these aircraft is not lost. So now the onus is going to be on HAL to, uh, to complete the development of this particular aircraft and then begin producing it at, uh, at a very high rate so the Indian Air Force can uh, you know, get those squadrons active. Now the Mark 1A is a variant of the Tejas that is um, uh, considered to be quite a big improvement over the baseline Mark 1. There's air-to-air -air refueling, there's beyond visual range air-to-air -air missiles, yes. uh, yeah, you know, there are uh, uh, all kinds, there's a self-protection jammer, there are all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, additional electronics that make it a much more survivable aircraft, more lethal weapons, more endurance, very crucially, much more easily maintainable. This was actually a crucial demand uh, for the Indian Air Force because the Mark 1, uh, a splendid little fighter that it is, uh, maintenance has been a bit of a bugbear and that appears yes. to have been completely fixed in the Mark 1A. So all in all, hugely crucial deal and uh, as we've been reporting, the biggest of its kind uh, in Indian defense. In fact, that's the point I want to come to. You're absolutely right. Maintenance is extremely important. Uh, Abhishek, we also noticed from what was initially said, perhaps 37,000 crore or 38,000 crore, now to uh, perhaps close to 48,000 crore rupees. So there is a cost uh, uh, increase. Is this cost increase because maintenance will take place at the bases itself? And that's huge uh, because the turnaround time uh, becomes so much quicker and shorter and more aircraft are available. Like in the case of Rafal, 85% of the fleet is available uh, to the Indian Air Force at any given point of time. Is that the effort? And does this also include the weapons? Uh, what explains this cost uh, increase? Well, Gaurav, if you uh, look uh, into the original uh, negotiations, uh, there is a cost decrease. Uh, by about uh, 8,000 crore. You're right uh, that, uh, you know, uh, initially we heard that uh, the deal will uh, go through at around 30, uh, 8,000 crore. But remember, the original uh, negotiation started at 56,000 crore, which is now down to 48,000 crore. Uh, so it's somewhere, okay. uh, you know, a middle path uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, has been taken. Uh, and uh, it's come down from the original uh, price of 56,000 crore. And that was one of the reasons uh, that, you know, it has taken about three years for these uh, negotiations uh, to go on. Uh, but now, uh, you know, with the clearance from the Cabinet Security, uh, Cabinet Committee on Security, uh, it has paved the way for the inking of the contract with HAL. And once the contract uh, is finalized, it will take three years for the delivery to start. That's the big challenge, because remember, the uh, initial variant, the uh, Mark 1 of uh, Tejas, uh, has, uh, you know, lost out as far as these deadlines yes. are concerned. Uh, so one can uh, really hope that as far as the manufacturing is concerned, it will be extremely quick. And it's not just a big boost to make in India and the indigenous uh, uh, defense sector, but also the Indian Air Force is banking on the stages uh, to fill in uh, the critical gaps in the oh, fleet absolutely. right now. The fleet is down to 30 squadrons, uh, you know, which is as opposed to the uh, sanction strength of 42. Uh, so these uh, 73 and the remainder uh, of the okay. 20 of the Mark 1A that are expected are expected to fill those gaps uh, as early as possible. Oh, absolutely. Everybody at, in the Indian Air Force and the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and all those associated with the manufacturing of this aircraft need to put their uh, shoulder to the wheel to ensure that there are no cost, time and uh, overruns and quality is maintained because every life of a pilot is precious. We need to ensure that. We'll be tracking that story very closely. Shiv and Abhishek, stay with me. The other story equally big and many say this is the icing on the cake. The Indian Army for long wanted a drone that the soldier on the ground could operate, that frontline combat soldier. This again is Atmanirbhar Bharat. This again is made in India. And this is a drone that's been approved by the army. A deal has been inked and these drones will soon be with the frontline soldiers. So whether they are at the high altitude Ladakh battlefield 
or at the line of control facing Pakistan or equally interesting if not more taking on terrorists in the Hafruda forest in Jammu and Kashmir these drones that can be used so that hybrid drones fly like a helicopter then take off like an aircraft can stay in the air for two hours and scan a wide area take a look at this report these truly promise to be another game changer A standoff that has stretched for over 250 days with troops from India and China massed at the frontier in some places just tens of meters from each other in eastern Ladakh. This warlike scenario has extended since the summer of 2020 and shows no signs of abating. But amidst the icy freeze, the Indian Army has sent out a major message today. One that stretches beyond the freezing atmosphere here in Ladakh. In a landmark move for Atmanirbharta in defence, the Indian Army has awarded a historic deal worth nearly 130 crore to an Indian company to supply military drones for troops deployed in the Ladakh high altitude friction points. The switch drone, seen here in video footage of trials conducted last year, will be built by its maker Idea Forge in Bengaluru and supplied in large numbers to the Army very quickly. Weighing less than 7 kilograms and with a flight time of 2 hours, these drones will be launched by army troops or special forces and can conduct surveillance and intelligence gathering missions at ranges out to 15 kilometers and altitudes of over 4,000 meters, allowing Indian troops to keep a flexible, fully Indian eye on the other side when necessary. Idea Forge UAVs are built like a bird and tested like a tank. This procurement is a testimony to this. The trial saw about a dozen Indian and global companies compete to meet the customer's operational requirements. Idea Forge's Switch UAV was the only product that could meet the expectations as well as exceed them. The Switch is a hybrid drone in the sense that it takes off vertically like a helicopter and then transitions into level flight like an airplane. It's the first major Indian contract for an Indian drone. India has almost always otherwise imported drones for surveillance. While the Indian Army has used small numbers of Indian drones in the past, including Chinese drones, this massive contract for fully indigenous drones is a major boost for the Vocal for Local campaign in defence and the Prime Minister's clarion call for self-reliance. This is especially true since these drones were chosen above offerings from abroad including Israel. The drones will enter service in a matter of weeks and will be in the hands of Indian Army troops in eastern Ladakh. Bureau Report, India Today. So some of us may have seen drones something like this in that movie Uri uh, and, and the role that they play. That is how the special forces uh, get a lot of edge. They get an edge over the adversary and Shiv the fact that these are made in India, numbers and cost and availability, turnaround, serviceability, all of this truly will make this very good for the army on ground, especially that infantry, so frontline infantry soldier. Uh, I cannot begin to explain how significant this uh, 20 million dollar but 140 crore deal uh, is that the Indian Army has awarded to an Indian company called Idea Forge for uh, uh, you know infantry drones. These are small drones that infantry troops on the front line in high altitude areas like Ladakh uh, including the standoff area uh, you know will use for uh, uh, near distance surveillance on enemy positions on enemy movements. These are uh, you know uh, uh, pretty capable drones with uh, high performance cameras uh, which can uh, you know uh, f uh, fly out to about 15 kilometers they've got an endurance of about two hours you know one would think that such capabilities would already be there with the Indian Army uh, especially our troops in an operational situation sadly it hasn't happened it took a standoff of this kind uh, you know to get the army on its feet and uh, you know fast track such a procurement and I think the big cherry on top is for once India hasn't looked at the import option it has seen that there is good uh, uh, you know, solid quality uh, equipment available here in India, made by an Indian company, and that's why it's placed this order. So it may be a small order of 20 million dollars, but it's huge given the implications, given that this is a, a you know relatively new company in the space, uh, and the fact that this is, of course, an Indian defence contract.
Oh, absolutely, Shiv. And and Abhishek, built like a bird, tested like a tank. Sounds extremely interesting. Also, the fact it can be used in counter-terror operations and urban warfare. So, it's made for Indian scenario, whether LAC, LOC, or uh, for urban warfare. That's right, Gaurav. We, uh, we keep talking about the two and a half front uh, war. Uh, the two and a half front means uh, the LAC, the LOC, as well as uh, counter-terror operations in Kashmir. And uh, something as multi-dimensional as this uh, completely fits the bill. And uh, just to give a little bit of a background, uh, these drones were first, uh, uh, you know, uh, envisaged and uh, a need was felt by the army uh, soon after the Doklam standoff. Uh, because remember, these drones, as we've been discussing, uh, are uh, capable of operating at 18 to 19,000 feet. And that's exactly the heights where uh, the Indian Army uh, needs to boost its surveillance and reconnaissance uh, capabilities. And with these drones, that will be possible. So be it the heights uh, uh, against uh, China or at the line of control, uh, the Indian Army's capabilities okay. for carrying out surveillance operations is only going to increase from here onwards. Shiv and Abhishek, for the moment, many thanks for joining me. The possibilities... Hello everyone, this is Rahul Kamal here. Hope you enjoyed this video. For the latest news and analysis, like and subscribe the India Today YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated.